Hi my friends, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about conjugal visits, all of the juicy, exciting stuff. So if you're interested in my most requested video topic, all about conjugal visits and what the emotions are like around them and what it's really like to go into a facility and give up your rights for the weekend, sleep over so you can be there with your loved one and then have to be ripped away from them and leave, please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I am the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Lives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. I'll put a link to it up there in the cards. I've been coaching prison wives and family members since 2009. We do not glorify or glamorize prison or prison wife life here. I use my years of experience to help you guys make the best of this one shot deal. There is nothing fun or exciting about prison wife life, prison life. Frankly, the whole entire thing sucks. But while you're stuck here, I'll help you make the best of your one shot deal. If you like this video, which you better like this video because you've been asking me for this video for years, make sure that you hit that thumbs up button. And before you go, hit the subscribe button and ding that bell so you're the first to know as soon as I post a new video every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes we do them on days in between. Okay, so without wasting any more time, I'm going to tell you my experience with conjugal visits and then also I'm gonna pass it over to a guest star. My experience with conjugal visits is nothing. We don't get them. There are only very few states that are left who have conjugal visits. A lot of my personal friends who Adam and I have both known for years from the street cannot comprehend the fact that we don't get them. Even though we've been telling them for 20 years, no, they're not a thing. In their brains, they just don't get it. So they just ask us every time. So when's your next conjugal visit? I should probably just make it up and start saying fake dates and start making up these wild, elaborate stories about what happens at these visits. But since I don't personally have experience with them because there are only four states left that have conjugal visits and no federal inmate will get a conjugal visit regardless of him being in that state. So for example, California is a state that does conjugal or also known as extended family visits and federal inmates in California will not get family visits. They don't get conjugal visits because state prison and federal prison are completely separate systems. They are two different entities. I did a video all about the difference between state and federal prison and I will post it in the link above. But what I did was I enlisted the help of a friend, MJ, who recently started a YouTube channel. I will post all of her information below. She's going to come on and tell you all about her visits. And I asked her to share not only what it's like to go to the facility, what the facility is like, how you pack, how you get ready, how often you can get them. Not only sharing the logistics about it, but I also wanted to know and I wanted to share with you guys the emotions behind it. I want all of us to remember you get what you get and you don't get upset. And we are all sisters on the same journey. Just because one state gets perks and you don't, we don't hate on them, we celebrate with them. I celebrate with you if you have a two day sentence and your loved one is coming home, despite the fact that my loved one does not have a release date. I stay in my lane, you stay in yours. We are sisters on this journey and we support each other. I am saying that to say, all support and love in the comments below. Without wasting any more time, here is MJ talking all about conjugal and extended family visits. What is up you guys, this is MJ. Today I'm on Rose channel to chat with you guys about family visits. I want to get right into it, but before I get started, please keep in mind that I am covering some of the rules and regulations pertaining to family visiting in the state of California. Therefore, if you're in a different state and you have some questions, please check with the facility to get clarification on some of the questions that you may have, okay? I have a few questions that I'll be going over, and if you have any other questions that don't get covered in this video, feel free to drop them down below. I'll be checking Rose's comment section and answering. First question that I have is, who is eligible, right? That's a very common question. As of 2016, 2017, the CDCR says that the eligibility slightly changed because prior to that, lifers without the possibility of parole were not granted family visits and they are now. It's very good. They pushed very long and hard for this one and it makes me happy that they are now eligible. In California, if you fall under a certain category, you will not be allowed family visits. That is if you are sentenced to death, 
if you are currently in a reception center, if you were convicted of distribution of narcotics while incarcerated, and if you have a violent offense that involved a minor, or if you have a sexual offense, you will not be allowed family visits. So if you do not fall under that category, then you are eligible for family visiting in the state of California. Each California prison has facilities for family visits with their immediate family members. So immediate family members are parents, siblings, spouses, children, stepchildren, okay? so. If you are an immediate family member and your loved one is eligible for family visits, then you can have family visits. If you're an immediate family member, you must be approved as well. You can't just not be approved and get family visits. So once you're an approved visitor, your loved one also has to go through a process, right? They have to go through their counselor and put in that they want to get family visits. So the counselor's responsibility is to double check that everything is good on their end and they are eligible for family visits. So once that is done, they will kind of send you over to the family visiting coordinator and they're the ones that coordinate the date and all that. Each facility's process with the family visiting coordinator is a little different, right? So where my husband currently is, he puts in the form with the family visiting coordinator. He gets back at him regarding the date. Once he gives him the date, it is my husband's responsibility to mail me those forms and I must sign and agree, you know, on the date that they're giving us and I'm the one that's going, right? So I mail it back to the family visiting coordinator and it gets scheduled in. So like I said, each facility is a little different on that particular process, but for the most part, it's pretty similar. All the facilities have a family visiting coordinator, so the dates and everything depends on how fast or the timing on that family visiting coordinator, right? So thankfully, ever since I've been getting family visits, it's been pretty smooth and I've only gotten them at one facility. So at this particular facility, they are pretty good on timing. Some places, like they have it every 90 days. It just, it depends, right? It depends how many people there are getting family visits. So obviously the schedule, the calendar will get filled up quicker, right? So where I visit, it's every 45 to 60 days that we're looking at from one family visit date to the next, right? So it's pretty good. A lot of people are like, dang, that's like so quick, but I'm still like, it's not fast enough. But we are definitely grateful because in other facilities, it's like every 90 or so days. Some of the other questions that I have is what what's the process like slash prep like leading up to visit and then what is it like when you're there so like i said process leading up to it my responsibility is just to mail two forms back to the family visiting coordinator and typically a week and a half prior to my day i call in and check in with the family visiting coordinator just on my part you don't have to do this but i do it just so i can get him to tell me that he received everything and that everything is good to go and that he'll see me on that date. As far as my emotions, you know, I'm just super excited. It can never come fast enough. I'm always like, ah, like it's a real treat to have that, right? You are able to reconnect, you know, obviously on an intimate level and it's, it's really just you and him. There's really, and as far as what I'm able to take there and everything, I literally just packed like the day before. I used to pack like real heavy. I'm like taking like, I don't know where I th I thought I was going, but you know, I pack very light now. That's all the responsibility that I have leading up to it. So when you're there at this facility that I'm at, you get processed. They check your marriage certificate, obviously your ID, and then they check everything that you're bringing in. Where I visit, and have family visits, it's a level two facility. From what I heard, because usually when people drop down to that facility and they come from like a level three or something, they say that they're way more strict. You know, like they pass all their things through a metal detector and all that sort of thing. They do not do that where we are. And they are not even crazy about it being like in a new bottle. As far as like the hygiene and everything goes that you take in, it doesn't have to be new. They are very pretty lenient, you know, but they do go through everything. They, you know, check all your hygiene. They check all your clothing, everything, right? Once they do check everything and they check everybody else's stuff that's there, they will tell you guys, okay, we're good to go. And then you'll walk out with the CO. They'll tell you, at, you know, like what little facility you're going to be at with your loved one. And then that's where you'll be. Once you're there, they don't, like, you won't physically see a CO. 
um, they will just call when it's count time. And sometimes depending on the hour and the CO, they will ask him, you don't have to like go out, but they'll ask your loved one to go outside, just like outside the door so they can like see them during count. But they'll let them know when they call if they need to come out to physically see them. Um, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And that's all the contact that you have with the COs during your family visit. So it's kind of nice, you know, like I said, they're not like, coming in there they definitely will come like if you don't answer the phone you know like so even if you're in the shower or something or something like that like you have to answer they have to answer you don't you can't touch the phone either like they tell you like you know you're not allowed to answer the phone you're not allowed to answer the phone if they're calling for count so the place just to give you an idea it's kind of like a little apartment there, there's typically two rooms a little living room space and then like a little kitchen area and then the bathroom where I visit, I don't know if it's the same. I don't know if some of you ladies let me know if you guys are in California. The kitchen area, it doesn't have an actual stove. That's what kind of sucks. Like you're dealing with like a, a little oven and a microwave and that's it. And it also has a fridge. So obviously, you know, you can put your drinks in there and everything, but we don't have a stove. That's the only thing that sucks. Usually my husband is the one like whipping up prison recipes. Some of them are actually pretty good. <laughs> Some of the stuff I would have never thought of eating or anything like that. So he's usually the one that hooks it up with the meals and everything since we only have the microwave and like that oven. So that kind of sucks because the food you expect it to be a little bit better, but since you're, you know, paying for all this stuff, but you, gotta work with what you got right they have a tv it just has a little bit of channels it's like local channels and then it has some cable channels where i visit they allow you to pick movies prior they just have like the same movies like all the time but they allow you to pick some movies and it has a dvd so you could be watching some movies you cannot have your phone so once you go in there like let's say okay i get to the facility i get my bag i turn off my phone i leave it in the car so I have like no contact with the outside world <laughs> for those like 35 hours that I'm with my husband. So it kind of sucks, you know, because your family is like, okay, like call me as soon as you get out, you know. Oh, something to keep in mind is when you're getting processed, they have you fill out this form. Obviously, they have you write down like an emergency contact if anything happens and that sort of thing. But you cannot have your phone. Us little phone addicts are like, ah, I need my phone. I'm always like, <laughs> I miss my phone. But obviously time just flies you don't really even think about that but it, that is something that to keep in mind you can't have your phone in there whatsoever so how often can you get these family visits like i mentioned each facility is going to be different because it depends on how many people are eligible for family visits and how many people are actually requesting to get them right so if you're at a facility where i don't know the majority of the people get them you're going to be getting yours pretty spread out right because the calendar is full where we visit we get them pretty regularly from what I hear at other facilities because we're looking at every 45 to 60 days that we typically get our family visit date. So that's every two months, right? Like every two months I'm going to a family visit. It's pretty nice. I want to chat a little bit about the emotions leading up to it. You know, I remember my very first one. I was so nervous. Like I could barely even talk to him on the phone like the day before and that day of. I remember he called me like I was almost to the prison and he called me and I could barely talk to him because I was just so nervous. My emotions were off the charts. I was like extremely nervous, anxious. I Something that gets me really nervous about this whole like prison deal is the process. Like I always feel like something is going to go wrong. So that's what really has me super uneasy. And then of course, like just my emotions all over the place. Like, oh my God, like I haven't kicked it with my husband like that since he went to jail. So it, it definitely was like a whirlwind of emotions and that was my toughest one after that I've gotten I've told myself like I'm cool I need to be calm I really want to be in the moment I really want to enjoy everything so I try to be as calm as I can something that I like to say is that before I used to get physically sick and not being able to be at visit or talking to my husband like really it really took a toll on me so I really try to stay calm stay busy to try to keep my emotions and my feelings like in place, you know, because if not, I'm gonna be like a total mess. So like I said, I just really try to take it easy, really try to stay busy so I can make my days go smooth. After the visit is over, I'm always like, like it's always like, oh my, I, 
I can't even describe it, right? Like it's it's like, you know, you a piece of your heart always stays and it, it it's tough, you know, because you really it really is a tease in a way, right? Because you get that feeling that you yearn for and it goes so fast and next thing you know, you know, you're out those gates again and on your way home and you know, it, it it's it's really hard. Honestly, it's harder for me the after than leading up to it, right? Um, because I just for a few days I'm always like extremely like missing him, but Something that really helps me is like I, I travel like seven hours from where I live to the facility. So every time I get out, he literally stays on the phone with me the entire drive. So that helps me stay calm. We just start, you know, talking about the visit. We start talking about like other things like, oh, I need to do this when I get home and everything. So that just kind of gets my mind going and just kind of helps me so much to just keep on going. You know what I mean? And it lets me not like dwell on my emotions that really really helps me like it really does but it's tough it really is it's just knowing that your heart is so full during those hours that you are with your loved one and it just goes by so quick it really is a little heartbreaking honestly um and and they they love it you know because they're away from that as well you know even though it's still on prison grounds they they get some sort of peace you know they they get some peace and quiet they get to relax they get to you know, use the restroom in peace, like, you know what I mean? Like little things like that. So it, it really, it really is nice for them. Besides obviously being with their loved one, it's still like such a nice thing for them. A question that I have is, are you treated like an inmate when you're there? And no, you're not. Like, honestly, like where I visit, like I said, the process is pretty smooth sailing. And other than that, they do not come in there, nothing. They just like literally drop you off the gate. Thank you. We'll call you guys when it's time to go. And that's all they do that day that the visitation is over. They literally would just call you and they'll be like, okay, we're going to stop by in 30 minutes. So that just means that they're going to come and the visit's going to be over in like 30 minutes. So you have to be ready with all your stuff and they're going to like pop open the gate and you know, you're going to be on your way. So other than that, no, thankfully this facility that we have them at, I've had like no major issues, like, you know, as far as experiences with the CEOs or anything like that thankfully thankfully they're pretty respectful there and they just really let you enjoy your time and let you be on your way I know other places might be a little different like I said some of the ladies that come they'll tell me how to other facilities but they are like a higher custody level and they say that they're just you know way more strict and way more like on you during the process and all of that what I have guys is is it more difficult to have them since you have to leave him and I'm going to have to say in my case, no, because I live pretty far from the facility. So I don't get to just, well, I could, but I choose not to drive out there, you know, pretty frequently. I typically go for my family visit, which is every two months. And sometimes I'll squeeze in a visit or two in between, depending, you know, like if I can't hold out any longer, I'll drive out there. But I do have a lot of family in Orange County, which is like a pit stop for me like I go and visit my family we hang out and then for you know Saturday or Sunday I'll go visit or something like that you know so that way it's not like super you know super tiring for me so like I said those are our very special moments together and I really try to suck it up and stay in control of my emotions so it doesn't like wear me down so yeah like if I can have a family visit all the time I would but it is difficult it is difficult the last question that I have, guys, is, is it more difficult to get them since I have to leave him? They are difficult because I'm telling you, when you're there, you just feel so complete. You know, that's all you want is to spend time with your loved one. So it really is so hard when you leave, you know, and then those days after, you really have to recollect yourself and get back on track. But for me, I'm going to have to say no because we've been dying for them for so long and now that it finally happened, I just really stay in control of my emotions and just know like, hey, you know, I will be back. So the last question that I have today for you guys is, is it difficult to get them since you have to leave him? I'm going to, for us guys, I'm going to say no, because we had been dying for family visits for so long. We really treasure that time. And after so long of doing this time with him and finally being able to get them we were like ecstatic you know and something that I can tell you guys is I really just like to stay in control of my emotions not let it wear me down and that really helps me and just kind of keeps me going and, and it makes me just excited like hey in two months 
I'll be able to come back up here and, you know, spend that time with him, you know. So I just like to stay really positive and just really not let myself get too emotional from having to leave him. You know, we just, I'm very busy. So that helps me a lot, you know, always staying busy, always doing something and just kind of, hey, next thing you know, it's 30 days away. And next thing you know, dang, next week I'm driving out.